Hey everybody, Dr. Bowers Office Hours here. Just a quick video to talk a little bit more about the form of the good and how dialectic relates to these first principles of mathematics, these intelligible objects that we mentioned last time in our discussion of the sun analogy. So, to put things in a more concrete context, let's imagine this situation. You're a mathematician. You practice mathematics and you're really good at it. You're an expert. And along comes a skeptic who challenges everything you do. Now, this skeptic is not another mathematician. Their skepticism does not consist in thinking that you forgot to carry the one, or that you performed some operation of mathematics incorrectly. No, this skeptic thinks that your entire discipline, first principles and all, is nonsense. They think the whole thing is rubbish. They say mathematics, do away with it. I don't think there are such things as numbers. How can you have a science that's based on stuff that doesn't exist? Numbers. Have you ever seen such a thing? Have you ever touched a number? What is a number? It's nonsense, and because it's nonsense, so is mathematics. That's the type of skepticism we're imagining. Or consider the way that many people are skeptical towards astrology. Their skepticism towards astrology usually doesn't consist in thinking that the astrologers forgot to do some crucial operation, or that astrology is a legitimate techne, but it's being done with slight incorrectness. No, your average skeptic about astrology thinks the entire discipline is nonsense. Suppose that a mathematician faced such a skeptic. What, according to Plato, could they do? Well, doing more mathematics would not convince this skeptic. This skeptic's problem is more of a philosophical one. And to engage with them, and to defend mathematics from such a sophistic attack, one needs to do something else. Dialectic, according to Plato. When the philosophical skeptic steps in and spuriously challenges the legitimacy of science, that is when the dialectician comes in and they do to the skeptic what Socrates does to his interlocutors in Plato's dialogues. Without proving the person wrong by appealing to shared assumptions or by deriving the incorrectness of their position from more basic principles, we simply ask the skeptic to reveal their own assumptions and show that they are inconsistent with something that they hold. In other words, we appeal to nothing other than the principles of consistency and unity, and in so doing, we defend the first principles of science from skepticism. In other words, we presuppose nothing but consistency and sameness in account, and in that, we end up refuting the objections to science. We end up proving science's first principles, so that they are no longer hypotheses. We render the first principles unhypothetical with dialectic. That's how it's supposed to go, according to Plato. Dialectic, that science of what Socrates does, that science of Alenchus, is meant to be the defender of the mathematical sciences. It's meant to be the defender of their foundations from sophistic attacks. Pursuing the sun analogy, we might phrase it this way. In the same way that the sun sheds light and thereby makes it easier to defend visible treasures from attacks, so does the good shed logical structure and reveal the futility of sophistic weapons. Anyway, that's it for the video. Just a few minutes, just a short clarification about the sun analogy. Stay tuned for more videos. I'll try to release them as, as I can. Uh, stay safe. Stay responsible. Goodbye. <laughs>